For what numbers x is the cosine of x equal to 2? Now I know what you're thinking. There is no such number. Think about the graph of cosine, right? We have, uh, if this is our x-axis and our y-axis, then cosine looks something like that and repeats right after the after the 2 pi mark and this is just 1 so the largest output it gets is just 1 so how could for any x value the cosine be 2 well the answer is it can't for any real number but what about if we allow a complex number in there is there a complex number z such that cosine of z equals 2 all right, because of Euler's formula right here, we have the following two properties, that the cosine of any real number is going to be equal to e to the i x plus e to the negative i x divided by 2. This is going to happen because the negative is going to get distributed throughout the sine, and so the sines will cancel, then you divide by 2 to get rid of an extra factor, and you get the cosine function. Likewise, sine of x is going to be equal to e to the i x, minus e to the negative i x divided by 2 times i. And we can actually take these, these identities because this formula, Euler's formula, is true for all complex numbers. Uh, if we put in a complex number z, this is still true. And we can actually define cosine and sine for complex arguments in terms of this. And that makes it quite easy. So we just replace all the x's with z's, where z is now a complex number, and voila. So if we want to solve for z and cosine of z equals 2, the first thing we can do is say z is a complex number, so z is equal to x plus iy for real x and y. So let's try that. Cosine of x plus iy equals 2. What this gives us is a way to change this left-hand side. If you recall, there's some trig identities that say uh, this is going to be equal to cosine of x times cosine of iy minus the sine of x times the sine of iy. And then that's all going to be equal to 2. You're wondering, do those trig identities still hold for complex numbers? And the answer is actually yes. <clears throat> Now, we're going to use some more lovely identities because of the de definition of sine and cosine in terms of uh, these uh, exponentials, e to the iz plus e to the negative iz divided by 2 is cosine, right? Notice the similarity between this and the hyperbolic cosine. The hyperbolic cosine of just any argument, it, cosh z, is going to be equal to e to the z plus e to the negative z over 2. That's how we define that, even for real numbers. Okay, so this is going to give way to an identity. This is going to give way to the identity cosh, cosh of ix is equal to cosine of x. Likewise, there's going to be a second identity which says <clears throat> that the sine of iy is going to be equal to i times Cinch of y, and we're going to use uh, we're going to use these identities because now we can substitute cosine of i y. Pull plug i in for x, and you'll get cosine or cosh of of negative x, but it's an even function, so it's just x. So cosine of x times cosh of y minus sine of x times and what's sine of i y? It's going to be equal to i times cinch of y. I'll move the i out front. And there we go. Now what you'll notice at this point is that this is a complex number with real part cosine times cosh and imaginary part negative sine times cinch. So we know that on this side it's just real. So that this has to be zero. Well there's two possibilities. Either y is equal to zero because that's the only zero of the cinch function or x has to be equal to a multiple of pi. If y is equal to 0, then we're going to have cosh of y is equal to 1, and then we're going to be left with the equation cosine x for real number x is equal to 2, and clearly that's not possible. So we conclude 
x has to be equal to some integer multiple of pi. So n pi is the way we're going to write that. And so that term disappears. Now, if, if that's the case, then cosine of x is cosine of n pi is equal to negative 1 to the power of n. So that we have negative 1 to the n times cosh of y is equal to 2. So we have to choose n even so that this becomes positive. And now we have to solve cosh of y is equal to 2. All right, now suppose we in general want to solve u equals cosh of v for the inverse cosh function. And by that I mean we want an explicit formula in terms of more elementary functions for the inverse cosh function. Can we do this? Yes, we can. u is equal to e to the v plus e to the negative v all over 2, right? Which if we multiply by 2 is 2u is equal to this. Now multiply both sides by e to the v and we get 2 times u times e to the v is equal to e to the 2v plus 1. Now move everything to the same side. What do we have? We have e to the 2v minus 2 times u times e to the v plus 1 is equal to 0. Now what we'll notice here is that this is actually a quadratic equation in e to the v. This is e to the v squared minus 2u times e to the v, which means we can use the quadratic formula so that we know e to the v is going to be equal to positive 2u plus or minus the square root of 4u squared minus 4ac, so just 4. And we can of course factor out a 4 out front, which becomes a 2, to get u squared minus 1 in there, divide by 2a, or just 2, and we get that e to the power v is equal to u plus or minus the square root of u squared minus 1, and then we can get uh, v in terms of u, so that the nat so that v is going to be equal to the inverse cosh of u is going to be equal to the natural log of u plus or minus the square root of u squared minus 1. Now we have a plus or minus, and this is going to be our only snack here. I said at the beginning there are two solutions. I essentially mean there are sort of two unique solutions. There's actually an infinite many, uh, infinitely many solutions to this because of the, the any multiple of pi deal. So what we're going to get in our case is that we have that we know that the the cosh is equal to two. So u is equal to two, and v is equal to our our x, if you will. So that we get that x. The only possibilities are natural log of two plus or minus the square root of two squared minus one, which is just going to be root three. So. And by x, I really mean y. Sorry about that. So if you'll notice, you'll notice that if we, we take e to this, so e to the y is going to be equal to 2 plus or minus root 3. Let's just do the positive one uh, for clarity. And then e to the negative y is going to be equal to e to the natural log of 1 over 2 plus root 3 is going to be equal to 1 over 2 plus root 3, where we use the property of the natural log function that if you have a negative 1 out front, you can bring that in as a power. <clears throat> All right, so what we get is that e to the y plus e to the negative y is going to be equal to 2 plus root 3 plus 1 over 2 plus root 3. And if you rationalize this, uh, you multiply by 2 minus root 3 over 2 minus root 3, you get 2 plus root 3 plus 2 minus root 3, uh, because you'll get a 4 minus a root 3 squared is 3 is just equal to 1, and then these root 3's cancel, and you get this is equal to 4. 
which should be exactly two times the value we want, right? Because uh, e to the y plus e to the negative y divided by 2 is equal to cosh of y is has to be equal to 2. So if you move the 2 over, this is going to be 2 cosh y is equal to 4, and we got exactly what we want. Same thing's going to happen if we, ha if we chose the minus uh, root. So that we are going to have a final answer in a nice, pretty closed form of z is equal to, our x values can be any even multiple of pi, and then plus i, times our y values that we said were acceptable. So natural log of 2 plus or minus square root 3 so for any integer n. And this, if you take the cosine of that, will give you exactly 2.